Regalia is made possible in part by Bernina of Oklahoma City, providers of quality, precision sewing machines. And by Four Child Society, designers of native apparel, t-shirts, decals, and more. And by generous contributions from viewers like you. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? I've got another great show for you today here on Making Regalia with me, Joaquin Lone Lodge based out of Concho, Oklahoma, home of the Southern Arapaho, Southern Cheyenne Nation. Uh, today I've got another other than like someone I've looked up to my entire power of life, Mr. Dwight White Buffalo. I'm glad to make it here this evening to make my presentation on how to construct a, from the ground up to a fancy dance or dance bustle. Mr. Dwight Blight Buffalo, my uncle, as very well, well, world renowned known, uh, you know, he started dancing like men's fancy at a very young age. And from there, you know, he jumped into the men's fancy, uh, the upper adult men's fancy, at the age of 15. Um, he won his first championship in Window Rock, Arizona. From then on, you know, he's, he's actually accumulated so many accolades. Uh, he's won, you know, Gathering Nation 16 times. Uh, he's won Red Earth seven times consecutively, and he's also won Skimitzin seven times too, uh, based out of Connecticut. From there, you know, he's actually been picked up by a couple of dance troops, uh, traveled the world. He's actually been to Japan, Dubai, Australia, and even Italy. Now, Mr. White White Buffalo is a full blood Cheyenne, um, Cheyenne Nation warrior uh, from Watonga, Oklahoma. You know, his, uh, his, uh, his Indian name is uh, Sun Bear. You know, it's very traditional. And uh, along with, you know, like, uh, you know, being very traditional and dancing, he makes all his own stuff. Uh, kind of like me, you know, I make my own stuff, but this is his style. Uh, we're going to kind of go through. Uh, but today, you know, like I said, you know, what Dwight said, it was we're going to construct a men's southern fancy dance bustle from the ground up. How to actually cut the spikes, how to do the extensions, uh, how to actually do the bottoms, and actually uh, how to tie the hackles. And now, uh, Dwight, you know, like, uh, who is it that helps you out first, like, how to learn how to tie bustles? Well, there's, uh, there's a lot of them that um, develop their own ways, their own style. One of them would be Joe Boynty, Billy McClellan, uh, Henry McClellan, all mm -hmm. the McClellan family. There's a... There's a lot of them in the state of Oklahoma that makes their own regalia and that has evolved, evolved in what it is today. Mm. And uh, through all that, all those uh, experiences, you uh, develop into your own way and your own style of making your own stuff. Yeah. So. These gentlemen, you know, I've grown up watching my entire life too. As far as Joe and, you know, Billy and like Henry, you know, they always have the, some of the best hackle bustles ever. And, you know, I do hackle bustles, you know, um, but hopefully, you know, I can actually come up to their caliber. You know, Dwight is world we're now known for his bustle making too. I do a little bit of different style, you know, I kind of do a little bit faster where, where Dwight actually does a more traditional one. Uh, he also does like uh, counting hackles, which uh, he counts like every individually hackle, right? And yes, it, and uh, it's time consuming, but it, it's uh, more or less, uh, it's uh, how you lay them and how they're going to look, how they're mostly um, in sequence. It's uh, more like it's going to they're all going to lay the, exactly the same way, yeah. and that's how you're going to get your uh, your prettiness for your uh, bustle. Yeah. Usually, what he's what he's talking about is he actually counts every individual hackle and lays them all facing one way. Uh, from there, he strings them up, makes little bundles, and once he's finished making all his bundles, which is very very time consuming, he actually uh, attaches them to the spike itself. Now, a lot of different bustle makers do it different styles. Um, you know, this style is kind of more their traditional southern fancy style. I alone, you know, I, I've been known to, you know, and what's kind of my style is I kind of got a feel of like, how much hackle I have in my hand. And uh, that's how I attach my hackles to my spike. But, you know, you, you can understand, you know, to do this style is very, very meticulous and time consuming. Um, my style is a little bit more faster. I can usually crank out a little bit of bustles a little bit faster than him, but his look is way different from mine. You'll actually see that there's a difference between that. And it's what separates, you know, the southern fancy from the northern fancy. Now, we're going to get into the construction of the bustles here shortly, but what I'm going to talk about is kind of the origination of the bustles. Uh, the Men's Fancy War Dance, you know, originated around the 1940s, and it's evolved to what it is today. It's one of the fastest dances out there in the power world. Now, a long time ago, these bustles, you know, like, weren't very elaborate. You know, like, uh, at the time, you know, I even talked to some of the older people, like, uh, uh, who are some of the older people you kind of were around, like, back in the day? Um, Daryl, Wildcat. Mm-hmm. 
They had the more like the old style type of bustle. Uh huh. Now, I'm mean, from what I've heard, you know, a long time ago, you know, fan dancers didn't have the elaborate looking, you know, bustles what they have today, what we have today. And you know, I even heard stories about, you know, they would try to get any feathers that they could, you know, depending on what they were. Most sought after ones was, you know, eagle bustles, you know, the actual eagle feather, the wing feathers from the eagle. Um, you know, if they couldn't get that, you know, they would use hawks. Uh, I even heard one time they even started trying to use buzzards at one time, you know, like, but you know, just to get any kind of regalia up and running. Um, now, you know, like today, you know, like what we use, uh, a lot of them have actually turkey spikes. Uh, they'll usually dye them white, black, uh, to whatever color you, your preference is. And what they'll do is they'll attach the, the hackles. The hackles are what's known as like the rooster feathers. Uh, these are dyed in certain colors and actually uh, you can pick out the different sizes that you want. And I think it was, uh, it was who was it that actually first brought the hackles out? It was... Uh the first one that probably come out was Wooji Washi Taker back mm -hmm. in the maybe 50s. Yeah. And this was never been seen in the power world, you know, like a long time ago, they had just plain feathers, you know, as far as actual the feathers, feathers. And when he did this, this was groundbreaking, you know, this shot off across country and a lot of fancy dancers, they started to decorate their bustles, their roaches with these hackles and their fluffs. And, you know, the cool part about it is that you can get so many different colors. You can create your own color schemes, you know, you can do whatever you want. But, you know, that way, you know, you weren't just different. You were different from everybody else. You know, you could keep your own colors. You can uh, make your own family colors. And so that's kind of where the originality of, like, uh, the actual bustles came. Now, a long time ago, you know, like, uh, this, this style of men's fancy, it got adopted up to the northern tribes. And uh, up there in northern tribes, they also have what's known as northern fancy. Uh, here, here in the great state of Oklahoma, home of the Sooners, uh, me and my uncle here, we're straight southern, like, fancy dancers. Uh, you know, we construct our, our bustles a little different way. Uh, you know, I construct mine in the eagle bustles, and he also uh, uh, uses the ones behind me are his personal uh, hackle bustles. But internally, all the, um, the feathers in there are all eagle feathers. About how long do you think you, it took you to actually create these? Well, the way my style is, it'll take probably, normally it'll take two weeks of straight being at the table, um, working consistently, maybe 10 hours a day. But nowadays, it, uh, you know, it's, it, it's really time consuming and it's going to take way longer, probably a month of, yeah. of good, solid work. Uh, and you, it'll turn out to be really nice. Now, my uncle here is actually one of the innovators of Powell World as far as bustle making. Um, about what's, what year did you say you introduced flag tape? Flagging tape in 1990. Prior to, before, that was uh, that um, Red Earth, bef well, before then it was um, Denver March Powell. Then mm. by the time Red Earth came around, everybody had them. Yeah, and this was this blew up across Palo Alto Nation world because uh, a long time ago, you know, a majority of the bustles I even grew up with, uh, to hanging from the bustle itself, you had horse hair. Uh, I saw a couple of people try to add ribbon and stuff, and no one actually ever had this uh, flagging tape, and it's kind of what's known as a prospecting tape. Uh, this is what's uh, used at prospecting uh, areas to kind of wrap around the areas. But the cool part about it is uh, this material right here, it kind of it flows very well once it, it, it gets caught in the wind. You know, it, flutter, it flickers and flutters. And the cool part is you can get different colors of it. You can get fluorescent colors, fluorescent yellow, uh, reds, blues, and orange. And I've known, always known that you always had the, the fluorescent color, huh? Yeah, it, it shows up in the... Maybe you was at Gathering Nations and you were looking on from way on top of there at the pit and you can see that fluorescent from at least 100 yards off in, the, in maybe 80, 90 dancers. Yeah, and there's a reason why you use orange, the color orange, isn't there? Like, isn't there like someone told you a long time ago? Well, orange, it's, uh, it's more like a family color. Mm -hmm. And uh, years ago, uh, we always stuck to family colors and... Uh, I always stuck with it, and uh, for ever since I was a kid, my grandpa he introduced that orange to me years ago when I was a little when I was younger, uh -huh. and he always told me that someday uh, I will. He showed me uh, some of these fluorescent colors that I have today, and he told me he said one day, grandson, he said you'll you will you'll be able to use this color. It's gonna make you. How about that? We were at the segment where we're going to start doing our construction of our bustles. Um, 
this is very time consuming. Like, uh, like I said, you know, what Dwight talked about, you're going to have to kind of free up some time to actually get to this because uh, this is very meticulous at work. Starting from here, we got our supplies. Uh, these are actually dyed rooster feathers, which are known as hackles. And you can get them in different sizes. You can get them from, you know, like the very small sizes, what it goes to like four inches? Four to eight, yeah. seven. And you know, the, more the, the, the bigger hackles are the kind of more sought after ones. Uh, they're kind of harder to get. Uh, from here also, we have, uh, from these uh, rooster feathers, we have what's known as, uh, we're gonna be working with uh, dyed turkey spikes. Now these spikes, uh, you know, come from the turkey. Um, a lot of times you'll get them in bulk and you have to go through them and actually select the best ones out. Um, Dwight, I believe, has already done that. So what we're going to do is he's going to shape the spike and get it ready. So um, without further ado, he's going to actually show you what, uh, you're going to have to get your measurement right, depending on the person's size. And from there, we're going to shape the, the actual spike. Probably within the past maybe uh, 30, 40 years, it evolved into this uh, turkey spike. Before then, they would use uh, eagles, eagle spikes and uh, eagles, it's hawks, just eagles, eagles, hawks, and buzzards, any buzzards, <laughs> and, uh, and it pretty Road much kill. any yeah. anything they can uh, construct uh, feathers with. Yeah, I mean you know to make a bustle. So from here, you're going to measure like how how like the distance that you want your spike, and that depends on you know the various size of the person, right? Yes, it, from a uh, young. Uh, Smaller person, you you know, measures a smaller size, and, and it depends on how much hackles you're gonna put on the ends, mm -hmm. and how much you're gonna put here at the end of the uh, beginning of the uh, turkey spike. Yeah, and that's kind of always been like a southern kind of style is actually ha add uh, the hackles kind of the base of the feather. Well, I've seen a lot of uh, polo dancers now, you know, like myself, we use like three different colors on the very tips. Um, so. You know, here he's going to actually measure it out and kind of shape it out with his scissors on. Uh, and what he's going to do is he's going to make one template. And from there, he's going to uh, cut every other spike just like that. So they're all uniform. And that you want to get them all perfectly uniform. That way, when they sit, they're all perfectly, you know, they sit perfectly. Yeah, from uh, this particular one, you know, uh, this first one is going to be your measurement for all your spikes, mm -hmm. left and right. You, you use this left one and you measure your right one with the same measurements and that's how you're going to get your evenness throughout the whole bustle. That is true. I forgot to mention that there is actually both sides. So there's actually a left and a right. So when you are purchasing hackles and spikes, uh, when you actually purchase the spikes, remember to get both sides. Because sometimes if you say, hey, I need a pound of hack uh, spikes, they'll send you just one side. And to create these bustles, you're going to need both sides. You're going to need a left and a right. What I would do is, you know, just, there's a bold here, and that's where I'm going to, uh, that's where I'm going to um, cut. I usually put it, you know, you can see it right there. That's where I usually cut it. Okay. Now, depending on the style, I cut a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, I kind of want to flare out the, the, the hackle, I mean, the spike itself. Yeah. So I kind of give a little bit more meat on the bone. Uh, he does a little bit more southern style. So uh, go ahead, Dwight, like, see what you got when cutting it. Yeah. Now, understand, you know, he's done this for years, you know, like many, many, many hours and many bustles. So, you know, it kind of takes a little bit of practice, you know. Don't worry about messing up your first one. You know, it's just, it, it's kind of go with the game of actually learning how to do this. It kind of gets scary, but just, you know, understanding you've always got more feathers to work with. And so what he's doing, he's kind of rounding the tip. And this will be uh, kind of like, uh, when you put it together, all of them will be rounded perfectly. And now what he's doing is kind of cutting zigzag. This will allow the, the thread that he uses to attach it a little bit better. You see. You see, this way you're getting all the feather from here to here, even this way. Uh -huh. on the top of the feather. Yeah, and like I said, the zigzag part will, will hold the thread, the thread down when he does his extensions. And you use uh, shish kebab sticks, right? Yes. Okay, so you can find those at your local grocery store, you know, to find the, uh, the shish kebab sticks. Uh, I prefer the kind of the smaller one because the heavier the shish kebab stick, the heavier your bustles are gonna be. So it depends on you know, your weight preference. You know, if you want like kind of lighter bustles, I kind of would go that way. But the only problem is when you kind of use that kind of stuff, uh, you have to worry about them breaking. So. Yeah, I I use the lighter ones. It's uh, it's a little bit. It makes your bustle a little bit lighter, and and, and you can go a little bit faster. Yeah, and yeah. also the it's more wear tear on your body the more heavier your bustle is. That is true. 
And also, that, uh, it, especially if you make it for the younger ones, it's going to be too heavy for them. And it, sometimes, you know, they complain about how heavy it is. But this way, it's going to be, you know, light. And they'll, they'll, you want them to feel comfortable while they're out there dancing. So mm -hmm. I always like to make mine light, light as possible. And that way, they will make the dancer feel comfortable while they're out there. That's why you can jam the more songs if you make a lighter set of bustles. And now what you're doing at the bottom is uh, he's actually going to pierce it with a dowel rod. Um, you can find these ones, like I think I messing, mentioned on my last show. Uh, they started selling these at Walmart, so it's kind of a 3.8 dowel. It's a whole lot cheaper than mine, the actual long dowel rod. You can buy these in a, like, uh, I think it's 12, right? Yeah. Uh, 12, uh, 12 pack. And you know, what you do is just kind of slide it up into the, uh, the spike itself. And w you also use uh, masking tape to attach it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, a long time ago, you know, I've noticed a lot of people used to glue it in there. And, you know, that if you ever had to work on these, it was kind of a pain to take these apart because it, it's glued together and cemented together. Me and Dwight kind of kind of our own rhythm where we actually uh, masking tape it. And, you know, I hold truth that, you know, all the bustles I wear and the ones I make, I don't really have to worry about the sliding out or breaking like that, even though I'm not using glue. It might be kind of scary to not use glue, but this, you know, works just fine for me and Dwight. And see what he's doing, he's going to actually wrap it in a spiral motion. And later on, uh, he might use, you know, uh, tape, electrical tape. And what you want to do is get it as smooth as possible. Because if you have any indentations using the tape, you'll see little bubble marks or, you know, like little wrinkles and stuff like that. So that's what he's trying to do is actually get it as smooth as possible. Now from here, what he's going to do is he's going to measure, like, how big he wants his bustle. Uh, he's got his spike already cut, and he's going to use his uh, measuring device to actually cut it uh, to specifically what, I think it's, are you making this for a kid? A adult. Adult, okay. So he's going to go like kind of the biggest he can get. And It'll probably be 18. Okay. 18 from, uh, from, from the bottom of this, the fluffy part, you can see there's usually a white spot in there. Uh -huh. And that's where I usually measure from. From here to here, it'd probably be like 10 inches. Okay, okay. And from here, you know, this is going to be his, his uh, numero uno spike. He's going to use this as reference for every single one of them. He's going to continuously make every single spike uh, the exact same size. That way, when he puts it all together, they're all matching perfectly. Now, this is also, um, I kind of figured this out, and we kind of talked about this one a long time ago. Uh, it's kind of a new innovation that I've kind of been working with. It's zip ties. Now, I found that, you know, zip ties are made of plastic, pretty durable, and we usually use them at the base to uh, make a little hoop. That way we can uh, thread it with our, uh, our, um, our shoestring to hold everything together. That's, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter that, you know, if it does break, it's very easy to replace. All you got to do is take an X-Acto knife, uh, cut the thread marks that you made with uh, it, and then just replace it. Yeah, I usually measure like two inches. Yeah, about two inches is good. Yeah, two inches from the bottom and then and all you got to do is just bend it in half and you got your own bottom right there yeah and uh, add a little glue on the bottom of your bottoms now what he's gonna do is he's gonna wrap like the little uh, like the little like bit like part around it and he's gonna thread it you know like what I've used in the past uh, you know he uses uh, thread actually a sewing thread um, I kind of cheat a little bit. I kind of cut a little corner. I use uh, what's known as uh, knitting thread. It's a little bit thicker. Uh, I can actually knock out bustles a little bit faster. Uh, but Dwight, being the traditional person that he is, he uses this re like religiously. I've seen him only use this. I try to make him use the other ones, but he don't like to use it because he likes to stay and keep it like traditional style. Yeah, and you kind of have to press it against your uh, table on the bottom. Press it down, and you can look. And your feather has to be straight down, and that's how you're going to get your uh, straightness from your, uh, when you line everything up. Exactly, because if, if, the, if the bottom is like kind of uh, twisted a little bit or cattywampus, uh, the feathers, when you put them up, they'll all be like different ways. Like one will be up this way, one will be up that way. You want everything to be uni uh, uniform. So now we're at the point where we're going to attach uh, the extension. The extension is what we use. Uh, he uses shish kebab sticks. This kind of gives like the feather kind of a straight look, but it also enforces like uh, the, the feather. It gives it stability. Because once you add these hackles, it starts to weigh the, uh, the actual spike down. So what he's going to do, he's going to go ahead and uh, attach the, 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 his extension. Yeah, I'm going to measure five inches because I want to have uh, five uh,
So are you going to use two colors with this or three colors? Three. Okay. And me, when I do it, I go a little bit longer. I go with six inches. That way I kind of gap my colors out every two inches. <coughs> but like I said, we have different styles and this is kind of his style. And see what he's doing now, he's going to use the same thread that he had earlier and he's going to wrap it. This will attach it and firmly secure like uh, the dowel rod to the spike. Um, this you're going to do over and over and over if you actually make bustles. Uh, it kind of takes a little bit of art and a little bit of practice. Uh, Dwight and, you know, has actually got this down to science, you know, he can knock these out pretty quick. Uh, you just want a good, you know, pretty good, you know, like little uh, thread work on there and you kind of want to glue it, that way you get a little bit hardened. And then from there, all you have to do is attach the feathers. So from here, you know, he's already got his extension done and what he's going to do now, if he was working on this, he's going to start adding his, uh, his hackles. These are the dyed rooster feathers that we have. Now these come in very all different elaborate colors and different sizes. And the way he does it is a more traditional kind of southern style of doing it. He counts every feather and if you look really closely, all the feathers are facing one way. And how many do you do on a bundle? Twelve, but if you're doing it for a... Uh a, young, a younger person, probably 10 to 7. Okay. And the way he does this and why he does this is uh, the more hackles that you put on there, the thicker they're going to be. Um, you know, but with the, with the drawback of that is the heavier the bustles are going to be. But, you know, this is kind of his style, the way he does it. And when he puts it together, you know, you have one side of the hackles going one way, you have the other side of the hackles going the other way, which perfectly syncs up when he does his bustles. So that's kind of how he does it. And from here, you know, he's kind of at a, like a point, and a lot of people do this, uh, they like to decorate the, the stem, the extension at the bottom of the spike. And he's got some already decorated right here. And, you know, a lot of people use tape, uh, yarn too, right? Yeah, yarn, yeah. tape. And a lot of times, you know, you can make intricate star designs mm -hmm. and family designs and inside the actual uh, design part which is pretty meticulous. I mean, it takes a lot of time to do that. But you can understand, you know, once you put them side by side, you can you know, go up one side, go down a little bit, and create a star. So, but what he's got here is just kind of a uniform straight color match. Um, this is kind of like a little bit faster to do, but it still looks good. And now from here, you know, like all these extensions are done, and all he has to do is add the hackles. Uh, Dwight, you want to add some hackles real quick? Yeah. Okay. So what color are we going to do with these ones? Uh, white. All white? Yeah. All okay. White. We'll use one of these. Okay. And so, like, what we're talking about, you know, you have your, the way he does it is you have, like, your hackles going one way, you have the other one. So what he's going to do is he's actually going to attach it where the, the hackles go forward and on the back they'll uh, go the other way, creating, you know, kind of a perfect, like, look to it. And kind of gives a little bundle patch to it. And uh, to me, I've always kind of looked at it. Is very monotonous work, you know, it's like something that I don't really have the time to do, but, you know, he has more patience than I do to actually knock these out. So what he's doing now is he's going to attach his first bundle. He's going to face the feathers outward on top of the feather, and he's going to string it. Um, like I said, you know, you're going to be doing this all night. And a lot of you bustle makers know out there, you know, like uh, you kind of get a raw finger here in a little bit. Um, it's kind of a little callous, but you can kind of tell who the bustle makers are in the power world because they usually got a pretty, like, stiff finger right there. But, uh, you know, like I said, he's going to attach the feathers one way and then he's going to add the other bundle the other way. Now, this is also going through, you know, he can actually add different colors to it so he can make his own color schemes. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many different types of colors, you know, from lightest to darkest to darkest to lightest to uh, rainbow colors. But this is how you can actually make them, you know, a certain way and fit whatever preference you're looking for. So, Dwight, how many bustles do you think you've made in your life? In one uh, winter... I made seven sets. Hey, that's a lot of sets, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and in fact, and uh, and maybe probably in one week, I make two sets, two sets at one at once. And how uh, you really didn't sleep that week, huh? No, it's, <laughs> it takes so long. I mean, it takes uh, pretty much twenty four seven of finishing a product. Yeah, and, uh, it it's uh, meticulous work and. It, also, it's really time consuming, and uh, it, once you have kids, you know, you might as well, <laughs> it's going to take you a month to do it, because you can <laughs> right. deal with your kids. Because you got kids stealing hackles yeah. and throwing them all over the place. Yeah. And like I was telling them, I had a story where I was actually uh, dying and set of, uh, I had some white hackle that uh, I had from the previous bustle, and I would used it for years and years on a set. And one day, I spent all night dyeing it, and uh, I dyed it, and um, I left it outside of my apartment. And what I did is when I left it outside my apartment, I guess the maintenance man came by and he found them. 
and they were on the clothes hanger and they were drying. I didn't know what he thought. He thought maybe a bird got in a fight or something. But he picked them up and he threw them away. And that was over like $100 worth of like, uh, uh, hackles. So wherever you are, maintenance man, I appreciate that. You know, thanks very much. I'll find you one of these days. But uh, <laughs> I think Dwight's actually died some hackles before too. Yeah, it's uh, once you die them, you know, there's uh, different kinds of ways to, to die them. But actually, it's uh, you're better off just buying them. But uh, yeah, because it's just a lot of work. It is. It is. You have to actually heat up the dye and actually kind of work with the feathers, dye them, rinse them. So what Dwight is doing right now, he's finishing up his ties. Uh, he's going through and, you know, wrapping them. And if you see, he's kind of got like a little bundle look to it. Uh, on this arm muscle, he has kind of the same like uh, perfect bundle look. So here we got the finished product. You know, we have the hackles all tied on there with the spike uh, decorated with electric tape. And um, from here, you know, what he's going to do is he's going to pierce it right here uh, with, a, um, with an awl, right? Or he can do that like, uh, he usually pierces it with an awl and then he uh, um, actually infuses it with uh, um, a shoestring. Uh, that way, you know, when he puts every one of them together, you know, they yeah. all like come together and make a full yeah, perfect What muscle. you want to do is uh, kind of face it down to where your, your bottom feather, this part right here, is facing uh -huh. straight and you want to see it. And you pretty much hold it there. And you want to get this perfect, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Yeah. And you, once you get your, uh, your awl and you, Punch it straight down, I mean straight down, and that's how you're going to get your um, accurateness. Yeah, and you got to get this right the first time. Yeah, <laughs> and that's uh, basically how to construct the um, your first feather. Yeah, yeah, and then from here, you know, he adds uh, horsehair or flag tape on the end, just mm -hmm. depending on what, you know, his preference is. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for tuning in to Making Regalia here in Joaquin. I'm Joaquin Lone Lodge. Mr. Dwight White Buffalo, Southern Cheyenne, me, uh, Southern Arapaho. Uh, we want to thank you again for tuning in. Uh, ha ho to all the people out there. Making Regalia is made possible in part by War Child Society, designers of native apparel, t-shirts, decals, and more. War Child Society, more savage than average. Visit warchildsociety.com to learn more.